So this is uh, for the uh, sustainable living program, as you know. And then this is a program. We have classroom, work room, laboratory, greenhouse offices, and a uh, small kitchenette. And then this is going to be a living laboratory of uh, sustainable living or sustainable technology. And then goals. It's uh, obviously Vedic architecture. This is a great example of Vedic architecture. And then this is an off-grid in, in terms of electricity, water, and the sewage. And lead platinum, that's the goal. And then also we are going after living building challenge. It's more uh, the uh, extreme in uh, sustainable or green aspect than the uh, lead. And then we are following biobiology, which is a healthy building concept out of uh, Germany. And then also the, uh, by request of our college, we uh, try to use, ideally, we don't want to use any petroleum-based material. But uh, nowadays, it's impossible to <laughs> not use the uh, petroleum-based. But we try to minimize the use. So the, uh, briefly going through the living building, building challenge, it has six aspects, site, energy, material, water, uh, indoor quality and beauty and uh, inspiration. And the, but each aspect goes beyond the lead. For example, energy, uh, we have to meet net zero energy. But uh, from the beginning, that's our goal. So naturally, it's fit into the living building challenge. It's same for the water, net zero water use. It's really fit into this problem. So you know, we don't have to do anything to meet living building challenge. We are already meeting without thinking about this. So. So I'll, I'll jump into the water of this building. So the, uh, we are using rainwater for all water use in the building, including portable. Yeah, that's rainwater. So this one goes towards the uh, east and coming out in the northeast corner, and it goes down to the system. The system was not built yet, but they, it goes there. So it was, this is a system right here. And then it will be pumped up to the uh, purification system, which has a dual filter, filter and then UV disinfection <laughs> system. And then go back to the, go, goes to the building portable water line. But uh, we are still kind of thinking another possibility, you know, recycling gray water, recycling wastewater. But, uh, so, but the basically, the main portable water is coming from the rainwater. And then also water efficiency is still important, even if you're using rainwater, because if you use inefficient uh, plumbing fixture, you have to have a larger system size, and then you'll pay more for that. So obviously, it's much cheaper to use just you know, very efficient plumbing fixture here. And then this is uh, uh, the uh, wastewater flow. So from the uh, toilet, it goes to the uh, septic tank, which is uh, aerated, and then that's a dissolved the uh, solid matter in the sewage. And then this is a secondary treatment, goes to peat moss treatment. There is a bacteria growing in the peat moss, it will purify the water further. And then the, uh, the end product, the effluent, goes to the subsurface irrigation, and then it goes back to ground recharge. And then this system can treat up to six, 650 gallons per day, which, which is way enough for this building. And this is kind of a schematic of uh, that system. And then this is a stormwater system. So this is the building. And then we're going to have a constructed wetland right here. So all the, uh, uh, the uh, stormwater well, first of all, we are capturing the uh, rainwater out of a building, so this is fine. But uh, from other side, as well as the other, other portion of a campus, goes to this wetland. And then there is a pumping system back to the uh, head pump. And then there is a stream feature. This is a really nice stream feature with the wetland plant. And then this has another function. This will aerate the uh, water. It is, it is very important to aerate the water at the your wetland, unless it's stagnant and then will start smelling bad. So this will be a really nice future, but you know, it's, this is a 
main entrance, so you go through this uh, stream coming into this building. How is that aeration accomplished? Oh, it's just a stream, so it comes, the water is pumped. Oh, by, just by virtue of being the stream? That's right, yeah, same as uh, like a natural stream, yeah. And then this is a quick schematic of uh, how water flow on the site. So this side, this side is a pre-development. When rainwater falls, it, it either go to ground or run off. So this used to be like parking, so there were a lot of runoff. But with this uh, living, uh, the sustainable living center, rainwater first goes to building water use, and it goes to wastewater, and then that one is uh, directly recharged into the uh, ground. So there is no surface runoff from this side. And then the uh, surface runoff from other side is goes into the constructed wetland, and then it will be slowly discharged to the ground or slowly discharged to the stream nearby. So it's much better than the pre-development. And then I'll um, step into the uh, energy. This chart shows the, uh, uh, the uh, thermal gain by window orientation. So this horizontal means the uh, window facing up which is a skylight. And then this is summer and both sides are winter. So during summer, you have more heat gain and during winter, you have less heat gain. This is not ideal. So you wanna avoid the skylight if you wanna make building energy efficient. And then east and the west, it's better than horizontal, but still you have more in summer and less in the winter. It's not good for passive strategy and then South facing window, you have less because the sun angle is higher during summer and then more in the winter. So ideal condition is like a south facing window. So building orientation is very important when you try to design the uh, energy efficient building. Uh, like a 5% of energy efficiency, if you try to make a net zero building, it comes from orientation. And then five, more or less five. And then one analysis I did, I deleted that slide, but uh, it's about 2,200 BTU per square foot per year. You need about 3 kW of a PV system to compensate that. So you have to pay for that. But the uh, orientation you can get for free, right? So. Could you say that again? How many BTUs does, uh, does it save? Oh, 2,200 BTU per square foot per year for the uh, 8,000 square feet school building in North Carolina. <laughs> so orientation, there is a Vedic orientation, north and east, that's the auspicious orientation. So how this Vedic orientation go along with energy efficiency? Actually, it goes along really well. Okay, east. Okay, main entrance is from east. And then we have our east veranda, really nice veranda, which act as a shade for the uh, east sunlight. And also we, while doing so, we are trying to bring the uh, nice morning east sun into the building as well. And then the uh, east side view windows, sides are really minimized to avoid the uh, heat gain from east. And the south side, th there is no entrance, but we need south window for greenhouse. So this is the ideal condition again. We just dedicate all the south facade for window to, for the heat gain into the greenhouse during winter. And the north side, we have some daylight windows and up high. And again, smaller view windows and mainly used for the daylighting. And then there is a secondary entrance. And the west side, we have to have a exit or egress for the uh, fire safety code issue, but uh, this is only exit only, so this is not technically not the entrance. And then again, the, uh, we minimize the number of window and the size of window and also veranda shades the west facade. And then talking about efficient thermal envelope system, Exterior wall assembly system, we have uh, a stucco, exterior stucco and two by eight wood stud assembly, which is the main structure of this building. You can see the, uh, uh, the uh, wood plywood, that's the main structure. 
and then inside of the stud there was a wet splite or cellulose insulation and then further inside what you see earth block which works as a thermal mass which kind of mitigate the uh, temperature swing within the building so you even if you know during summer time you know this thermal mass will kind of uh, mitigate the temperature swing so during daytime it absorbs the heat so keep the building cool and that during night time it releases when the uh, outside temperature is uh, lower and then by the way these earth blocks are made by students using local very local right next to our local soil and then we have a membrane roof and then the two inch actually it's not pallet insulation it's two inch of a rigid insulation we can go up to r14 right now so and then also inside another layer of insulation which is a cellulose insulation so this is really well insulated roof and originally it was r57 but i think it's much more than that right now right now and then even floor, we are using radiant floor system. What you are seeing is a structural slab right here. And then we're gonna have a two inch additional topping and then with the uh, tube for the uh, radiant floor. And then so that uh, in order to make radiant floor really work well, we really insulated the uh, floor as well. There was a three inch of uh, uh, cellulose grass, cellular grass insulation below slab and also perimeter we insulated well. So total insulation is like R26 for floor assembly. And uh, for view windows, we don't have a window yet, but uh, what we are using is the uh, uh, super glass window, which is a two film suspended between two glazing and filled with a krypton gas. So total, total window assembly R body is R10. It's not the center of glazing, it's a total R body. And then the uh, like highest you you can get from like a, some product like Pellite, like 3.5 or something like that. Who are you coming to making these? Uh, serious material, serious. yeah. And then for daylighting, you don't want to have a film because you want to get as much daylight as possible into the space. So we use just regular double glazing, but then we put the gas in it. So this is a daylighting schematic. South facing monitors south-facing or north-facing clerestory and then there is a reflector in a corridor you don't have a we don't have a reflector yet but the, from the opening in the high up the light bounces back on the reflector and come into this classroom as well as this north-facing uh, clerestory and then our target is two thirds of the time of the year we don't have to use the uh, artificial lighting just uh, use natural light so how high will these walls go if that light has to come in here? The wall itself goes up, but there will be you know opening like that right here between the column. Also, the uh, the advantage of uh, natural lighting is not just having natural lighting into it. You can save energy from lighting fixture. Also, the lighting fixture makes a lot of heat. Well, not much for this building because we are using LED light, but uh, you know, typical building, it produces a lot of heat. So the, uh, consequently, you can downsize the uh, cooling mechanical system by using the uh, daylighting system. Also, the uh, student's performance will improve. It was shown by the uh, study. And then more than 90% of our occupied space plus bathrooms are daylit. 